Hey there, I'm Joey, and today we are going to do a deep dive 500 mile review of the Durston X Mid Pro one person tent. I use this tent on the Colorado Trail for almost 500 miles plus a few other trips, and I feel like I've got a really good read on what works and what doesn't. So I'm going to share that with you right now. Now, I bought this tent right when it came out in February of 2023. I was literally so excited to try it. Uh, that I was on the laptop and just hitting like refresh, refresh, refresh until the orders became open and I was able to score one right away. So I've got one of the very first iterations of the Durston X Mid Pro, which is a Dyneema tent in contrast with the original Durston X Mid, which I used for about a week on the PCT last year. So I've got a good comparison between the two tents. Gunslinger also used the Still Nylon version of the X-Mid tent on the Colorado Trail. So I was able to kind of make some comparisons. And that's helpful because there are some things that I wasn't sure if maybe they had changed on the newer versions of that Still Nylon tent. And there are definitely some differences between that tent and the X-Mid Pro. I really wanted to love this tent and for $600 you would hope you'd love it and I'm kind of passionate about my gear so uh, anything I spend that much money on I really want to just knock it out of the park in terms of features and functionality. There were definitely some things about the X-Mid Pro Dyneema tent that I like a lot and there are a few that I don't so I'll share those with you in a little bit and at the very end I will tell you whether I would buy this tent again or not. Let me tell you first of all the things that I liked about this tent. What are the pros of this tent? First of all, it weighs just one pound and that is just absolutely amazing. It shaved a good pound out of my pack compared to the Nemo Hornet two person tent that I had been using for several years. So the weight for me is number one, the best feature of this tent. In addition to the weight of the tent itself, it only needs four stakes to pitch. Uh, I find it's better with six. The extra two are to stake out the doors. Six stakes versus the ten that some of these other Dyneema tents take uh, is something to factor into the weight consideration if you're counting every gram. And overall, I found it to be a pretty comfortable tent. Uh, when I first started using it, I found it was a little bit drafty just because of air coming up under the vestibules and it's a single wall tent because it's made of Dyneema, but just adjusting the pitch a little bit made a big difference in that. And some things that make it very comfortable are the fact that it is wide enough to have some gear next to your sleeping pad. I used a standard width sleeping pad, so that's 20 inches in the tent itself. The inside is 32 inches wide. So I was able to put a lot of my just small gear items next to me with an easy reach at night. If you have a 25 inch wide pad, then you're not going to have as much space, obviously, but you're still going to have enough. So I think that's a, a nice benefit of the tent that it's a little bit wider. And it is also, it's probably not the longest tent on the market. It's 90 inches long. I found that I could actually just kind of stretch out with my arms over my head in the morning. And that was nice. And I'd like to keep my empty backpack under my feet in the evening just to give my feet a little bit of extra elevation as I rest. Um, so I had plenty of room to do that. The width and length, I think, are definitely big advantages of this particular one-person tent. On top of that, it's got double doors, which a lot of one-person tents don't have. And for me, that's really a priority. I like to be able to kind of have a, if there's a crowded campsite, a public door and a private door, if you will, uh, should I need to sneak out in the night. Um, and the doors uh, where a lot of the one-person Dyneema tents have a stake kind of right in the middle that you have to navigate around to get in and out. Um, this is just set to the side of the door on either side, and it's a mirror image tent, so you, you can set it up either way, and you don't have to navigate around those poles, so they don't get in your way. Uh, you don't have to worry about knocking them down when you're coming in and out of the tent. So that's a nice feature. And then the vestibules are very large as well. They're big enough to store a pack outside, but I don't like to do that. I just worry about critters getting into my pack, so I usually leave my shoes out, my water bottles, and then I have a little piece of... Um, Tyvek that I use as kind of a door mat, if you will, outside my tent. So I just kind of set that up and leave the few things I need to leave outside, the dirty stuff really. <laughs> and then everything else comes inside. But they're nice big vestibules and they're also big enough that if it's raining, you can cook inside your vestibule with the door open and you don't get rain because of the angles of the tent, you don't get rain coming down on your head. So that's another thing that I really like about this tent. Now, when I was on the PCT and definitely on the Colorado Trail as well, there were some places where you just don't have a great campsite. You don't have a lot of space to cram your tent in there. That was part of the reason I decided to go from a two-person tent to a one-person tent. 
And this tent, even though it's got the big vestibules, even though it's got the extra length and width, you can get into some pretty tight spaces. So I appreciated that when I was really kind of starving for a campsite at the end of the day, no place to go. You take the first place that looks decent and it worked. A couple of other little features that are nice. Uh, and I was very excited about the magnetic door um, latches or loops or whatever you want to call them. And it does have a zippered vestibule. So you just unzip the vestibule, roll it up, and then use this little magnetic tab to keep the door open. And then when you need to close it, just pull it and it comes apart. So um, that was a feature that I really, really liked. And I kind of wish that the mesh doors had that as well, although they use elastic that you have to tie in a knot if you want both the uh, the mesh door and the vestibule door to be open. So yeah, I would love to have that magnet on the, the mesh, but I just, I don't know if that's feasible, which might be why they didn't do it. It might be weight. Um, but anyway, love, love, love that feature on the vestibule doors. It's also got two big pockets. Like I said, it's a mirror image tent, so you can set it up however you want. And either way, you're going to have one pocket next to your head and one by your feet. And I use this for storing things that I need easy access to, you know, or like things like my dirty socks that I want up in the air to get some airflow, but not be right by my head. So those were handy to have. They're a good size. You can get a lot of stuff in there if you need to. The Colorado Trail is nothing if it's not windy. And there were some nights that I had a lot of wind. There's places where you could put extra cord to tie it out even more securely, but just using the cord that it had and the six stakes that I had, um, it did very, very well in high winds. It also held up to hail very well, which surprised me. I even met the Dyneema is so thin that I was concerned that maybe you know, when you have hail that's more than just a little kind of BB size that it might damage the tent. But I had it in hail a few times and I didn't have any issues at all. So those are the things that I like best about this particular tent. But there were definitely a few things that I didn't love so much. Things that I would like to see changed. Uh, they're not necessarily deal breakers for me, but um, definitely they're things to think about if you're considering spending $600 on a Dyneema tent. Before we move on, I'd like to ask you to just take a moment to subscribe if you are not already subscribed. If you have subscribed, thank you very much. If you're new, I hope you will take a moment to do that because it does let YouTube know um, that I'm creating good content and it helps them get my content in front of more people, which allows me to then create more content. I really appreciate that because it does help me to grow the channel. First of all, and this is probably the biggest one for me, is condensation. In their marketing, Durston talks about how the design helps to manage condensation and it's definitely an issue with Dyneema tents. But I found that probably three quarters of the mornings on the trail, I had some kind of condensation in my tent. And that was really frustrating because with the geometry of the tent, you have to, the, the peak is not like centered right above you. It's kind of a little bit to one side. So if you sit up towards the wrong side, which I did most of the time, um, I would end up getting a wet head from the condensations or I would brush up against the sides of the tent as I sat up and get water on my clothing. I started putting my um, little camp towel that I have, um, I put that in the pocket and then first thing in the morning before I even would get up, I would just test the tent walls and see if there was condensation. If there was, I would wipe it all down so that I wouldn't sit up and get wet or bump into the walls of the tent and have it drip water down onto my gear. So the tent does have two um, vents on either side and I use those every single night. If you open them, you get more airflow. In theory, you should have less condensation, but um, I didn't. So anyway, that is something to be mindful if you're looking at this tent. If condensation is an issue for you, then you're gonna need to either carry some kind of absorbent cloth uh, to remove it or just be super careful about where and how you set your tent, which is not always an option on a through hike. So yeah, condensation, not my favorite. Another thing that I noticed as soon as I set up the tent when I first got it uh, was that the Dymanema walls are very thin. You can almost see through them. The first time I had it out, I was laying in my tent and I could literally see the sunset through the walls of the tent. So I made a note to myself, never change with a light on in this tent because you're just going to be giving people a show so i would always crawl into my tent and just get my clothes changed in the dark and thankfully the days were longer so i, I rarely needed to have my headlamp on unless i was getting up pretty early in the morning but if privacy is a concern that's something to think about um you know i camp by myself a lot so it's 
not that bad, but <laughs> give the deer a show, I guess, if I need to. But, uh, but yeah, it's very, very thin walls and you can really, you can see through them. Yes, you can see through them. Another thing that I found bothered me more over the course of the hike, the more I used them, the less I liked them. And that was the dual zippers. Basically the way the zippers are on the mesh of this tent is there's one horizontal one right above the bathtub floor and there's one vertical one. They come together in a point um, where you would open and close them like this. So you could do it with two hands. Supposedly they're one-handed operation, which yes, you can. They're easy to use. You can open a zipper with one hand, um, but you'd have to do that twice. So for me, I'm concerned about noise for my neighbors. Uh, if there are other people camping around me and I was like, gee, this is just double the zipper noise. Uh, and the other thing is I prefer a single zipper with a curve in it so that I can just close it high and tight. With this one, there's no way to do that because the zippers come together at this little point the, at the corner. Um, there is a little tiny triangle of fabric there uh, to, I guess, protect any gap that might be there. But I found that at times the zippers actually got caught on that fabric. So it just, it wasn't ideal. And I also discovered that because there were two zippers, if I got up in the middle of the night, um, I might open, open them and go out of the tent and come back and forget to close both of them all the way. So there were just random times where I'd be laying in my tent and I'd look up and I'd realize, okay, the top zipper's half open, even though the bottom was closed or the bottom was open a little bit. Um, so it was just sort of an inconvenience, I guess. And over time, I think I would get used to that and remember, okay, I got to make sure I close both of them. But, um, yeah, just, I would prefer a single zipper. Yeah. If you ask me, I'd say, let's just make that, make that change there. <laughs> Another issue I had, and this for me was a really big one, probably second to the condensation factor, is that the floor of this tent, it's made of sill nylon and it is very thin and very delicate. Um, in all the miles that I've backpacked, I have never put a hole in the floor of my tent. On this trip, I had three. Uh, and they were, it was weird. It wasn't like a, it, you know, a stick came up or a rock or something like that. They were all little slits that were, were about half an inch long, clean edges. And I found them three different times, even though I use a footprint and even though I baby the tent, I fold it and pack it the way they recommend. But I kind of started wondering as, by the time I got to the third one, if there was something in the tent that was actually making it a cut as it was stored in my backpack and maybe as it was getting you know crammed down with other gear and that sort of thing so a little delicate and it was a good thing that i carried tenacious tape i was able to just fix them in the field but but very frustrating now the third thing that really really makes me crazy about this tent and i don't know it might be worse than condensation because it's just a knit for me is the stays in the corners um every single time i set up this tent without fail there was at least one corner that would not stand up straight with the stay and it's basically you know it's it's the stay is sewn into the each corner of the tent and on the outside of the tent there's a cord that loops around from the top through um, another cord that attaches to the body of the tent and then comes back so if that cord is not straight, I don't know if I can actually, if that makes sense the way I'm showing you, if the cord isn't exactly even or exactly the right angle, that's going to affect it. But even as I manipulated those cords, I could not get those corners to stand up. And it's not just a cosmetic thing because it affects the bathtub floor and it affects whether your tent is actually laying down kind of on the ground um, or standing up and giving you that protection from the bathtub floor. Now, the more and more I became irritated by this, I looked more and more closely and was like, okay, is there something I can do either in the field or when I get home to adjust this? I couldn't find anything, but I did notice that the two um, corners that were the worst were the ones that were on the vestibule side of the tent. So I think it's something about the design of the tent because it is those two corners and not the other two corners. I just, yeah, I couldn't make it work and it made me crazy because I like my floor to be nice and, you know, just nice and smooth, you know, before I throw everything in there. I like to know that I've got, you know, a certain amount of kind of wall around me to protect my gear, especially if it gets wet. And so it was just, it was a really, really, really frustrating thing for me. And then I mentioned the rain and the hail. I did notice that 
there was splash up in heavy rain. This didn't happen every time it rained, but when between the hail and heavy rains, if you were kind of near a puddle or if a puddle formed around you, then the hail caused the splash up or big raindrops would cause splash up. So I was sitting in my tent one day and I was like, it was pouring. <laughs> and I was like, it feels like it's raining inside my tent. I, it took me a minute to figure out what was going on. Um, because water was dripping down on me and getting my quilt all wet. It was cold, so I had my quilt out to keep me warm. And I realized that this splash up was coming up and it was going through the mesh walls of the tent. So I was getting water inside my tent. And I ended up actually just reaching outside the tent with my trowel and digging a little trench um, just to get all that water away from the tent as best as possible. But yeah, it wasn't ideal, especially when you're cold and you're trying to stay dry. You want your gear to be dry to have that splash up coming up through. And I, you can set the tent lower. Uh, and I tried whenever I knew there was a storm coming to set it so that the edges of the tent were as low to the ground as possible. However, that's not as easy um, as it should be. And it may depend on your stakes. And it definitely depends on how level your site is. Because this is a tent where if the ground is level, you have, no matter what you do, you have to stake out all four corners in a nice square before you pitch the tent. But if your site is not level, then that skews the angles and then suddenly you're not able to get a really good pitch on it. And I found this was a recurring problem. And I think anytime you're on a through hike, anytime you may be doing dispersed camping, you, your sites might be a little dicey. And so this is something I struggled with a lot of times where I just could not get a really good pitch on it. Or if I knew it was going to be cold and rainy, I wanted to get it down as close to the ground as possible. Um, but then it just, it, it, it just didn't work. You know, I'd have a couple of inches and I did notice that compared to, um, Gunslinger's tent, she was able to get it nice and close, like, you know, almost to the ground. And I just could not do that with the Dyneema tent. So, um, I don't know what the answer is for that. I don't know why I had trouble when they say it's supposed to be easy, but it was definitely an ongoing frustration for me because I wanted to do it. Uh, I wanted to do it to stay warm and dry, and uh, it just it didn't work very well with this particular tent. So those are the things that I don't love about the tent and the things that I really do like about the tent. They kind of, you know, in balance come out to be about even. And the big question, I guess, for, for you that are watching, if you're thinking about buying this, is would I recommend the tent or would I buy it again? I would definitely recommend considering the tent and comparing it to your other options and seeing what works best for you. Uh, for me, I think there's definitely, you know, some of those advantages are really, really nice features. Um, but at the same time, I would have to think twice about spending $600. Hmm. I'm still in a quandary on that question. Um, I don't regret having bought it. I like it and I will continue to use it. Uh, it is a good tent overall. Like I said, it's comfortable. It's definitely got some of those nice features, but I do not know if I'd buy it again today. I think I would wait and see if uh, Durston makes um, some edits to the tent, if they change things like the zipper, if they can somehow um, adjust configuration a little bit so that the pitch is a little bit better, um, then I would buy it again. So that's all I have on the Durston XMID Pro one person tent. And I would love to hear from you about your thoughts. If you've used this tent, uh, what do you think about it? And maybe you've had some of the same problems I have, or maybe you haven't, or comparing it to other tents, what are your thoughts on that? I do read every comment. I respond to as many as I can, and I do really appreciate uh, any feedback that you have. So thank you very much. And I will see you next time.